Here in New England, we're heading into winter, which is a tough time of year for so many of us. Around here, the trees are bare, the landscape is gray and bleak, the days are really short, the nights are dark and long and cold. And that cold and lack of light can cause something called seasonal affective disorder, also known as SAD or SAD, or as a friend calls it, the winter blahs. And maybe I'm talking to you. Maybe you have seasonal affective disorder. Maybe you just go around feeling tired all the time, dragging through the day. Or maybe you're just going through a tough time right now in general. But no matter what you're dealing with, if you're struggling, exhausted, at your wit's end, if you're ready to give up, stay tuned. Because in this episode, we're going to talk about how to find some light and color in the darkest of days. Seasonal affective disorder or SAD doesn't affect us all in the same way. For many of us, SAD can be nothing more than a mild sense of sadness or the feeling that you just want to put on a pair of sweatpants, lie on the sofa, eating fudge, watching TV, and praying for spring. But for others, sad can be absolutely incapacitating, and in some cases, even life-threatening. Sad can rob your life of every single pleasure. It can leave you paralyzed, unable to move, or absolutely without hope, which is why I wanted so much to talk about it now, even while we're in the thick of the holidays, because this time of year is when sad can begin to show up. And let me just stop here. Let me stop right now and say to anyone who's having trouble functioning normally, please know it doesn't have to be like this. There are simple things you can do right away to feel better. And if you're interested in learning more about that, give a listen to my podcast 24, 10 Ways to Beat the Winter Doldrums. And in that episode, I offer you all sorts of really simple things you can do to feel better fast. But I'm thinking maybe you want or need more help than that. If so, I have offered some really powerful suggestions and links on how to look for that help, how to get the help you need. Just go to the show notes. I've left them there for you. If you have any thought, a single thought of harming yourself, stop. Just stop. Pick up the phone, dial 988, which is a crisis hotline. It's also called the Lifeline, and that's what it is. 988, or you can call 1-800-273-TALK, T-A-L-K. Or even faster, go to the show notes, click on the link I've left there for you. That will connect you immediately to someone who understands and can help. Please no more suffering. You don't have to do this alone. There is help. Just reach out. And let me say, you deserve to feel better. I was out for a walk a few days ago, all bundled up in a heavy winter coat, hat, mitten, scarf, the works. It was a cold and it was that gray part of the afternoon, you know, just before the sun starts to set below the horizon. Everything, everything around me was either gray or brown. And as I was walking, I noticed the withered stalks sticking out of the ground where a few months early, there'd been these gorgeous banks of flowers and bushes. There were dead leaves scattered all across the lawns and the, the gardens and our neighborhood. All I can say, our neighborhood was cold and lonely and colorless. And I have to admit, that's exactly how I was feeling, cold and lonely and colorless. And I was I was walking, all of a sudden I saw this unexpected flash of color, a yellow in my neighbor's lawn. I looked and I looked again. 
No question about it. There was a dandelion blooming right in the middle of that lawn. There was this beautiful splash of color in the midst of all those winter blahs. And, you know, seeing that dandelion changed everything for me. You know, it reminded me that color and miracles can show up when you least expect them, even on a cold winter afternoon. It reminded me that there is always hope and that even something as humble as the dandelion can make a difference in how we think and we feel. And that shift in thinking got me much more interested in in dandelions about how they bloom in the most difficult and unexpected places. You know, around here, dandelions poke up between cracks in the cement. They show up, they bloom along in the sand along the, the highways. They even show up in gravel walkways. Just they they show up where you least expect them. And dandelions show up in really impossible places. They bloom in harsh conditions where all the other really fancy flowers could never exist. And, you know, what I love the most about these dandelions is they show up on dark days, a splash of color and and courage and a reminder that all things are possible. All things. All things. So... What is it about the dandelion that allows it to flourish in even these terribly tough conditions? First of all, the dandelion blooms where it lands. As soon as it touches down, the dandelion immediately starts to put down roots. And then it goes on to make the very best of its environment, no matter what that environment looks like. You know, the dandelion doesn't wait around for things to get better, for more sunlight, more water, better soil. It uses whatever resources it can find, and it makes the best of those resources. That dandelion is resilient. And the idea of resilience reminds me of this beautiful story I heard years ago about a 90-year-old woman who sadly loses her husband of 70 years. Without him, there was absolutely no way she could stay in their beloved home. She had no choice but go to a nursing home. So on the day of her move, she arrives at the door of the nursing home, neatly dressed, makeup in place, and a smile on her face. A nurse meets her at the desk and welcomes her and says, let me show you to your room. And as they're riding up in the elevator together, the nurse starts describing the woman's new room and all the details, the color, the curtains, the the furniture, the view. And the woman says, the older woman says, with enthusiasm, I love it. The nurse says, but you haven't seen it yet. She sounded a little puzzled. The old woman replied, I don't have to see it to know I love it. I just have to decide to like it. She smiled at the nurse. You know, for me, happiness isn't about what happens to me. It's about what I choose to think and feel about it. And today, I am choosing happiness. Today, I am choosing to accept that this is a new adventure in my life, and I'm accepting that with a grateful heart. And I'm choosing to find the very best in this new beginning. So I'm thinking like the dandelion, this wise, wonderful older woman is choosing to bloom where she is planted. But that's not all. But there's something really interesting about this dandelion that helps him to not only survive, but to thrive and bloom in tough conditions. So not as only does the dandelion put down roots quickly, it also sends a single root deep into the earth. Sometimes it can go as deep as 15 feet. And this root is called a taproot. Now, this taproot serves to nourish and support that dandelion, keeping it strong and healthy, no matter what's going on around it. And you know, I believe you and I both 
have an emotional taproot, just like a dandelion. We have a strong root that nourishes and supports us and keeps us safe and anchored no matter what's going on around us. No matter how dark the days become, no matter how the storms of life batter us. And our taproot is just one single word. Belief. Belief in yourself. Belief in a higher power. Belief in hope. Belief that tomorrow will be better. Belief that you're not alone. Belief that spring will come again. It doesn't matter what you choose to believe in. What matters is that you choose to believe in something with all your heart. Because like the deep dandelion root, a deeply held belief in ourselves can keep us anchored and safe and nourish us even in those very darkest of days. And believe me, I know about dark days. And I believe that taproot, our deeply held belief, allows us to not just survive in that tough time, but to thrive and to bloom even in the dark places, even in the toughest circumstances. So if this time of year is tough for you, the first step in feeling better is to, just like the dandelion, accept where you are, accept what you can't change, and choose to respond to this, whatever, with a resilient and positive attitude. Choose to respond in spite of your circumstances with power and acceptance and peace. And then allow yourself to connect with that deep belief in yourself, to connect with what matters to you, to connect with who you are, with those special gifts and talents that you have to the uniqueness that is you, and then share the wonderful truth of who you are with the rest of the world. Allow yourself to bloom wherever you are planted. And I believe deeply that that bloom, that splash of color we share with the world is going to make a difference to the world around us no matter how big or small that contribution is. Because in spite of what you may think, you matter. What you say and what you do matters. The truth is we all have something important to offer the world, no matter how small or unimportant it may seem. What we bring to the world may matter deeply to someone else, even if we can't see it ourselves. Because you never know when someone might be walking by you on a cold winter afternoon, feeling lost and sad. And they might see you blooming there in spite of everything. They may see you showing up to let your life shine into the world, letting your belief keep you anchored and safe. And suddenly that passerby might be reminded that there's still hope, that the world is full of miracles and possibilities and new beginnings. You might be that dandelion and just seeing you there with your light shining may help them remember that no matter how long the winter may seem, spring will come again. Thanks for being here with me. I really appreciate you and your your presence here in this community because you matter here. It makes me, first of all, it makes me feel less alone and I hope it does the same for you. I just want to close by saying I'll be taking the next few weeks off to finish um, my second book. I know that's not taking time off, but I have to admit writing is my happy place. And that's where I'll be over the rest of December and January. I cannot tell you 
how excited I am about how this book is taking shape. And I cannot wait to share it with you. So if you're not subscribed, please do so. And I will be very happy to share my progress with you as I make my way towards the end. There's an easy link for you to click in the show notes. So if you miss me, and I will miss you, you have a lot of past episodes to keep you company. And as always, I'll be checking in on Facebook from time to time so we can be in touch there, even about older episodes. Love to hear from you. And of course, I have other resources for you as well. My book, Common Sense, which is available in fine bookstores everywhere and online. And then I have an anxiety quiz a mini course, and downloads too. Again, easy access in the show notes. It is such an honor to be of service to you. And I wish you all a healthy, peaceful holiday season. And I'm so looking forward to seeing you in the new year.